Okay, good morning or almost almost afternoon um, It is Sunday and um, Yeah, it's a little late for the the start of the vlog I guess usually I just try to get as much filming as I can in probably Saturday Sunday And then the rest of the week is usually when you just see me in the car in the morning. And I'm sharing like, random stuff with you. So um, I want to say like Friday after I showed you guys all the jewelry um, and I was wearing like a low tank like a low cut tank so that I could show you guys the necklaces properly I Did a few things that morning and I can't determine which things is Why I'm in so much pain right now? <laughs> um, okay, we'll get this out of the way. This is a YSL. I think this is beige blouse a rouge voluptuous shine I told you guys I've been feeling pinks lately a little bit, but I probably should not be wearing this pink right now because it's I'm tired and it makes me look more tired, but okay, well, that's done. So, either I did something to my shoulder when I changed. Sometimes that happens, you know, you're wearing a weird, you're trying to get in and out of a weird shirt or you're trying not to mess your hair up or whatever. Or it's when I was using my pull-up bar. I've been using it for a couple months because it really helps my back. Whenever I'm home, I'm thinking of getting one for the office, but like whenever I'm home, I'm just like hanging from it and like doing all this stuff and it just makes my back feel so much better. But I must have done something and I didn't dislocate my shoulder, but from my neck and my shoulder, I like cannot move. It like hurts me to breathe. I can't look in certain directions. I can't get like getting in and out of bed is like difficult. I don't know. So tomorrow's Monday and I'm going to try and get in to see a doctor because I can't push it off any longer. Got to pay that deductible. So yesterday was Saturday, so I didn't do anything. I, like, I think I cleaned my makeup brushes, but I did not leave the house. I kind of like, you know, let my hair and my skin breathe as they say. I don't even know what that means. Okay, so since I have um, the groceries in the front seat with me, I'm gonna share with you. I don't know, I am like so out of it today. I drove halfway to Target and then I realized I didn't have my phone, which you think, oh, maybe she's someone that has like a phone a lot, but I actually don't. Oh crap, my neighbor, she's gonna be like, this girl is so fucking weird. Okay, now it's like so so dark <laughs> But my neighbor was like she was like in her garage and then she like drove out and she put her car in the parking lot outside and then she I don't know. She's wandering too much, but let me finish the story. So I Realized I don't have my phone. I drive all the way back and you know for some people when you do groceries Maybe it's not a big deal to not have your phone But like if I'm going to Target, I need my cartwheel app, right? Mm -hmm. And I pair with my Ibotta app because you know and I'm the I'm that girl that's like on her phone like okay This is on sale. Ooh, and I get a dollar back here. Ooh, and a dollar back uh, Off on Target like that's me. I'm that girl. I'm the girl who's on her phone like fully unaware of Archer Farms Parmesan Garlic Chips. I've never had these before. I actually don't buy that much Archer Farm stuff outside of like the trail mix, so I want your Rex for other Archer Farms things maybe. We have eggs, almond milk, two bags of these. I think they were 30% off on the Cartwheel app. Ben and Jerry's. Um, I got the Tonight Dough again because I had, this is the first one I ever got and I just really, really liked this one. Um, and then we have Coffee Toffee Bar Crunch. The coffee, like the buzz, there's one called Coffee Buzz or something, but it was so far in the back and I couldn't reach it. Even standing on the thing, I couldn't reach it. It was on the top shelf, so I got this one. Hopefully this was just as good. I loved coffee and I love toffee. A lot of you guys are recommending the slices and a lot of you guys recommended this Americone Dream. So, perfect. And when I paid, a $1.25 coupon printed out for one of these. So I'm going to go get another one. Um, probably cookie dough because I've been really craving cookie dough. Um, I have two boxes of the L'Oreal Feria. Um, what was it? It was 20% off on the Cartwheel app, and then they also were running this thing where if you bought two, they gave you a $5 gift card at checkout, so I got that. Okay, these are two things I just had sitting on the counter that I wanted to share with you. I had bought this one or maybe two weeks ago, Veggie Made Spinach Lentil Pasta. This is so good. I know, like, I'm always trying to share, um, like, non, like, less carb type pastas, and the lentil pasta from Trader Joe's, the red one, was was pretty good, but it tasted very like like you knew it was lentil pasta. This so good. I mean, I don't know how many servings it is. It says it's like two and a half servings in this bag. Uh, no, it's one serving. I'm sorry. This made one bowl and it, I ate it, and it was delicious. Now, 
Good morning. It is, I don't even know what day it is. The whole point is to share this with you. So I had showed you guys a couple of purses. Hold on, hold on. Okay, yeah, I shut the windows. Okay, I showed you guys a couple of purses in the last vlog from Bloomingdale's because I'm on this quest to find this like kind of medium sized bag, like medium for me. A medium for me is like 10 inches, nine, 10 inches, and a bag that I could take to work and have excess room if I need to like put other stuff in it if I go to a meeting or if I just, you know. So I got this bag. How cute is this? It's by Tribeca and I had shown you guys a bag from this brand before. It's like a diffusion line from Joy Gryson. I think that's how you pronounce it. Okay, so oh, let me show you. The, oh. I like to explain like so much. Okay, so I had bought a bag from this brand before. I think it's really hard to find bags um, cause since maybe like a few years ago, I started buying kind of like luxury and there is quite a difference I would say in the kind, like just the, how it's made, the quality, the seams, the material, etc., the wear, how it wears. So I had bought this bag before from this brand. Let me make it bigger. Do you guys remember? Do you guys remember this bag? It was all camo but it had like two handles. So you would have to pull the flap through both of the handles and to open it and close it. And it was just such a hassle, even though the bag was so awesome and so me, it was like military print, right? Camo print. So I sold that, but then I saw this bag. This bag's really easy because it has this handle, which is like so nice. It's so nicely done, this handle. So all, when I'm like wearing this crossbody or off the shoulder I just you know I can hold this and this thing just flat pulls up and it's so easy the interior maybe we'll do a more like I don't know do I want to do like a what's in my bag is that even a thing anymore also I don't even know if you can get this bag um, this is called the Murray I'll list it below from what I've seen they have ones where it's like all black but I kind of like the hardware on this it's like this like kind of oiled bronze vibe so it's not quite gold but it still like reflects um, looks like that it's so nice now I got it off of guilt and I think it was like they were doing 20% off I think it was around like 70 75 something like that so really good price okay so I think her bags are like two to three hundred dollars at retail and then when they end up on guilt or Nordstrom Rack etc you can get them for under a hundred which is really great the only thing is whenever I research a bag to purchase I've noticed that a lot of the brands that or a lot of the retailers that um, carry her brand no longer carry them. Oh, so I wonder if it's getting discontinued. I don't know. So for the price, I think the bag is awesome. If luxury bags aren't in your budget or you don't want to buy them, i.e. for example here, like I think that over time, the past few years of buying luxury, I don't think, like I like it, but I also feel like it's not worth it. Like I'm sending three Prada wallets and a Fendi and a two Stella McCartney's. I, I still love the Stella McCartney's, but like, I'm just kind of, I'm sending them t for like consignment. I'm just like, I don't know to resell. I think because of my, like I get bored with things and I need things to be functional. If there's even a little inconvenience in getting in and out of a purse, I'm just like, this is not happening or a wallet. Um, so convenience still plays a huge factor. I refuse, and it's always been like this, I'm not gonna carry something for the look or for the designer. So I really like this bag. It's minimal, but it kind of has like a briefcase vibe, but it also kind of has like a school bag vibe. I'm just like so into it. It's just a really good bag for like my size, like a bigger bag. My hair looks a little awkward right now. I dry shampooed the crap out of it today. Do you see? It's like so full and vol voluminous. What is this? What is this? Okay. Um, so yeah, if I can find this bag, I will link it. Um, oh, and the other thing I wanted to say, because it is, you know, not one of those like luxury type bags, you can hear. Do you hear that? It's like a, it's leather, but it, I think it's like an, a cheaper leather, um, but it doesn't smell bad. So I like that because um, you know how faux leather has this like weird plasticky smell or almost like oil, gas, something like that. 
So thank you to everybody that responded regarding um, my question about like implants or a bridge. Um, I think two people, if I'm missing anyone, I'm really sorry, but Nicole, I was just hoping just someone who knew what they were talking about, like, you know, with like proper experience would respond. And she gave such an amazing answer. It, it combined like what I needed to know also like, that is exactly my experience. I am someone that has had a lot of cavities, root canals, and then that leads to a crown, and then that leads to, like, in this case, uh, like a tooth extraction. Like, so the thing that stood out to me the most was like, even for a root canal, just get the tooth pulled, essentially, and forget the whole like root canal crown that gets ruined, and then you got to get an extraction or a bridge. Like, because the amount of money it costs ends up being so ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go with the implant also. I think Sky Lily, she responded to kind of around the, like in the same direction of um, advice or recommendation. So definitely gonna go in that direction. So I'm probably gonna make that appointment. But before that, uh, I think I might need to do something up here too. My dental life, I think, is more exciting than my personal life. Like I'm like seeing three dentists right so like I have my main dentist which I see more regularly and then like last week I saw my oral surgeon so now I'm gonna have to make up an appointment with my endodontist that's so exciting isn't it it's really not today I have a chiropractor appointment <sighs> I hope I hope they can do something my back is it's just okay so we're gonna do a little Ben and Jerry's overview review, I guess. Uh, there was a comment in the last vlog, so I was like, okay, let's go through this. Um, I bought these just now, today. The chocolate chip cookie dough, um, the bars, like the pint slices. So Target printed out a $1.25 off coupon over the weekend for me, and when I went to go make this purchase, I checked the Ibotta app, and there was 75 cents cash back. So I got this thing for $2, which is awesome. I think it was like four, maybe, maybe less, if that's even better. I also got Half Baked, which I've gotten before. It's chocolate and vanilla ice cream, and then cookie dough, and then fudge brownie. Like I said, I only discovered Ben & Jerry's maybe a month or two ago, and I just, I'm obsessed how like every bite has like these big chunks of whatever they say is like in there, you know? So I recommend this one. This is the Salted Caramel Core with uh, Blonde Brownie and Salted Caramel Core. I wasn't thinking about what core meant, and then once the second I opened the lid, I was like, oh, duh. So you just have like this gob of whatever, chocolate, caramel, or whatever they say is in the core. I don't like that because I like having like, you know, like this, where it's just all throughout, like every bite or two has something. Whereas this, it's like, I kind of have to like, it's like dipping your ice cream into the core or like you get too much core and it's too sweet. So I'm not, I'm going to stay away from the cores from now on. This one was purchased upon your, all of y'all's recommendation. This is really, really good. And I'm probably gonna try it in the pint version also, but this is, yes, very good. Thank you so much. This one we know I love. I've gotten this twice. And then the coffee toffee. Oh my God, this is so delicious. Now, it says coffee ice cream with fudge covered toffee pieces. So you would think that, you know, you only have toffee in the toffee covered pieces or the fudge covered pieces, but when you have the coffee ice cream by itself, there is an intense toffee flavor there still. So I'm just saying you really need to love toffee to like this flavor. And I love toffee, so I'm totally fine with the coffee ice cream tasting like toffee coffee ice cream. This is just an aside, the Talenti coffee chocolate chip. This is so good. It's like the chocolate chips have been blended into the ice cream. And I don't mean like, you know, like whipped or like swirled in like the actual chips are like tiny Ooh. horrible review or they're actually like really tiny you see so every single bite tastes like a frozen smoothie almost i guess that's the best way to describe it good morning okay so we're trying this is a slightly different light situation so we'll see i brought them a little closer i actually feel like you can see shadows more now I don't know if I like that element of it. Well, all right, so I had a bit of an uh, unplanned, unforeseen thing this morning, so I <laughs> burned myself with a curling iron. I wore, I wear a t-shirt. I try to like cover as much as I can when I'm doing my hair, generally. But when I 
flipped my hair, my head. Um, <clears throat> so there's that, which is unfortunate because the thing I want to demo for you, I'm this is why I'm wearing this, is like I wanted to show you this brush. So this is the Artis Palm brush. I had showed you guys my original unboxing with like all these brushes and I did a get ready with me and reviewed all kind of the face brushes. And I was like, give me some more time and I will do like a more proper review for this because while I did use it for foundation, I basically can't apply anything else like makeup wise. Like I have to go on with a blank face to apply foundation. Do you see the, like in comparison to like the size of my face? I do find it to be large. So to, to apply this without kind of disrupting your eyebrows, your eye makeup is a little difficult. Um, it does work really well for skincare. So if you want like an even application of skincare, that works too. However, I found the best thing for it. So I do body shimmer pretty often. I've shared it with you guys a lot of times. This is the Josie Marin Argan Illuminizer. So let me show you why this is amazing. Whenever I apply shimmer, I put it on my hands or I put it on my body and you're like, you're doing this like rub, rub, rub thing. It's fairly uneven. I mean, I don't know about you guys. I haven't really perfected a way of like, applying anything with my hands evenly. Um, and for lotion and whatnot, that doesn't really matter. You don't see it. But like something like this, I mean, you can see the unevenness. So let me show you how I use this. I did this over the weekend and I was like, oh my gosh, I look amazing. So we're going to just use this brush to blend it all in and it's very ergonomic you have this place where you can like place your finger so the brush doesn't move now obviously I'm not doing the back because we don't need to show that right now and I'm just gonna do half and then we'll do the whole thing so you can see Like, look at how easy this is. Like, if you're trying to do pinpoint, that's one thing. But this looks amazing. So do you see? I'm sure you can. Like, it's just, like, perfect. So I'm just going to do the other side. So my body skin right now is looking pretty perfect. It looks super healthy, super glowy, super even. I think with powder highlighters, you tend to see um, a lot of kind of like the graininess on your skin because it's such a large part of skin showing. So something like this is going to be like the go-to brush <laughs> for all body highlighting now. More so liquid highlighters and cream highlighters. And then as far as powder highlighters go, it's gonna be like the super dense, almost liquidy cream feeling type powders. So I don't self tan, but if you self tan, you will love this. I've self tanned maybe once or twice in my whole life and I never wanna do it again because it's so hard to get an even application. Not to mention the prep time of trying to like exfoliate your skin and get all the parts. It's just, it's a lot for me. Um, so I just embrace whatever color I am. But if you self tan, you will get the most even application. It's just awesome. And I think any makeup artists that do brides or any kind of like body work where like off the shoulder or like bikini shoots or something, this will apply your sculpting and your highlighting to the body with like, this is the makeup artist. Like I don't even, you know, anybody could make it look so perfect using this brush. So that's kind of my recommendations for you regarding this brush. It is a beautiful brush. I mean, look at this. All right, so let's kind of cover up our, our, our wound. Okay, I was actually going to show you guys like this brush at the end of the video, but I was like, well, why do that when I can go through the whole video looking all like perfect skin and glowy, right? Okay, all right, we're going to go through the skincare. I use the It Cosmetics It Confidence in a Cream. It is getting a little cooler here. It's still kind of like 70s, 80s not quite past 80 during the day, but in the morning it's in the 60s, so it's cooler. So I'm using a heavier moisturizer. Love this. This is like one of the best kind of all around moisturizers. If you just want something to moisturize your skin and not like treat your skin in any way, this is awesome. The Cosmetics Opti Crystal Liquid Crystal Eye Serum as usual. And then I use a little bit of this uh, Seabright Eye Revive. I've shown this to you before. You can get this at like TJ Maxx. Um, I just take a little tiny bit of it and just kind of pat it around the under eyes just so that like, you know, concealer and 
corrector and powder you know once you do all those layers you just want them to meld and sometimes i don't like using like a finishing spray at the end so something like this kind of just makes it look not powdery on the lips we have the skin fix lip repair balm to prep really love skin fix guys they have a eye cream i really am trying to get my hands on it it's like not sold in the stores by me that carries skin fix Ugh, okay the foundation today is the La Mer Soft Fluid. I have mine in the shade Linen. Again, we're basically at winter shades right now. I don't know, the past month has been so light. So that's what we have on the face today. Guys, I love my makeup today. It looks, like on camera, I know it often probably looks the same, but like in person, I'm just like, oh, I love this. Okay, so one or two vlogs ago, I shared this duo that came together, the Lancome Visionaire Eye, as well as the Lancome Camouflage Corrector in Peach. This I had really high hopes for because I was reading all the reviews and the, most of the reviews, it's like they're so positive. And a lot of people love this as a treatment to use at night and during the day. Um, I was more interested in it as a daytime under eye primer because it was supposed to blur and kind of like make your fine lines less visible. Okay, so my review is going to be it's amazing if you can handle dimethicone. About three months ago, I realized that dimethicone directly on my skin, my skin's, I think it's allergic to it because it gets itchy, I get a bump wherever I've applied it, depending on your skin type or how you exhibit or react to allergies, that's what happens. At least that's what happens for me. So I used this on the first day I used it and I applied it. I had applied like, you know, my eye cream and I applied this on top of it. It does instantly, I mean completely instantly, remove your fine lines. Like I did not see anything. It was just like very blurred out and very perfected. And then once I applied like a corrector and a concealer on top of it, it looked gorgeous. And at the end of the day, I removed it and it was fine. The next day I did the same thing, looks amazing. But by the second day when I had removed it, I realized that it was like kind of dry on my under eyes. And that is because I, I'm allergic to dimethicone. So I would absolutely 5,000% recommend this to you if you are totally fine with silicones on your skin. Also, you would say, okay, if it's like a primer and it's a silicone primer, why don't I just use any other kind of just face primer on my skin? A lot of the face primers that are like pore filling and like blurring, I don't find them to be moisturizing. This has this moisturizing component. I think because it's formulated for your under eyes, it moisturizes, it fills in your lines, it blurs. I would totally like apply it wherever you have drier areas. I think it would look so good and react so well with like other makeup and other skincare. So I wish I could be like, this is the best product for me. It's the It would be the best product for me if my skin could tolerate Silicones. The next item is the Tante Idol Ultra Wear Camouflage in the shade Peach. Yes, this was sent to me a couple weeks ago, but you guys have been seeing this on the channel for at least a couple months, and I love it. I put it on and I did a demo in the Get Ready With Me last week, so I'll link that below. I'm, I'll link the exact time, that way you don't have to like scroll through the whole thing to find it. But this is awesome. My initial um, concern when I had first tried it was in July and I was like, you know, it's summer and a lot of emollient products tend to look better in the summer and I was concerned that as it got cooler, maybe it wouldn't look as perfect, but that is so not true. That's a swatch of it. It's very pigmented and I love it. Do you see that? Like that's going to cancel stuff out. So the way I showed you guys in the Get Ready With Me, I apply it to my ring finger and I press it together to warm it up and I place it right here. And today I dragged it a little lower, put it right here under my nose, I put it around my mouth, wherever I get shadows or darkness, uh, that's where I apply peach correctors. I often find with the right correctors and really good correctors, you can get away with it on its own. You might not have to apply concealer, especially if you're someone that is really trying to minimize the amount of layers you put under your eyes, which I think is most of us, unless you're like, you know, a newborn, right? So. I recommend, I mean, I didn't even have to tell you guys that, right? Because you know I've been using it. On top of that, I put the Bare Minerals Bare Skin. This is a very lightweight, kind of glowy concealer. Um, I didn't want to not put anything on top of this today, only because I wanted to do, you know, this is the whole point of this is to share products with you that I love. So this is what I use on top of it. I am in the shade Medium, and I just applied a tiny bit along here. To set the face, we use the Charlotte Tilbury number no. two. 
I was feeling really, really bronzy today. So I used the Black Up Contouring Powder. It's a duo, it's in the shade 00, it's the lightest one they have. Um, if you're unfamiliar, they are geared towards women of color. So sometimes, I really love the brand. I've reviewed a lot of stuff for you guys from this brand, but sometimes even the lightest shade doesn't work for me. So I'd love to try their highlighters, but I think even the lightest one is might be too gold on me. But I used the contouring shade today as my bronzer, and we can see that it looks really really beautiful like do you see that and then i after using a fluffier brush on like the larger parts of my face i went in with like a slightly smaller brush and kind of did a little contour action so it's it looks really really beautiful and then i use this side to kind of clean up this area just a tiny bit because sometimes i get a little liberal with the bronzer and i'm like mm. so this item was a bit of a rediscovery this week so next is my highlighter which i'm sure you've seen on my face by now it looks so beautiful um, I showed you this earlier, but I couldn't show it to you in the proper lighting. And now we are in the proper lighting, and I am just like, oh. This is the Lancome Dual Finish Highlighter. It's in the lightest shade, Shimmering Buff. This is what the product looks like. It's a very kind of neutral tone. I would say it leans slightly cool. Here's a swatch of it. I have it here. Do you see how beautiful the skin looks? Here down the center of the nose i have it highlighted on the inner corners of the eye i mean look how beautifully like natural that looks i mean not super natural but like you know what i mean like it blends into the skin it just melts into the skin and then i have it very heavily above the upper lip this is a very metallic highlight but it's very lightweight like, it's not like pressed very tightly i use a fan brush on the cheeks, down the nose, and like above the mouth, I use kind of a denser concealer brush, like, you know, a rounded tip. It is so beautiful. I think if you heavily apply this, you can get that crazy, crazy, like, you know, stark highlight. I did it very lightly, but I did do two layers. But you can see how pretty it is, right? Like, I love it. This shade, while I think it's neutral, because I'm warmer, it just leans a little warm, and I feel like if you're cool tone, it'll just lean a little cool. So a lot of people could enjoy this. I think fair to medium, you would. This is amazing. I don't have a lot of texture on my skin, so I don't know if this would necessarily emphasize the texture on your skin. But I have used highlighters that create texture. Do you know what I mean? And this doesn't do that. So that's what I can tell you. I can't. I just keep looking. It is so pretty. I'm, I'm just glowy all over. I'm loving it. Okay. For the brows, really quickly, I pulled out my Makeup Forever Aqua Brow. This is number 25. I just have been playing with a lot of different products lately. I am excited. I have more things to share with you in like a drugstore diary soon. Um, but I pulled this out because I was wanting, I felt like I couldn't get my brows to stay on properly. And this stuff is pretty budge proof. So I used this with kind of an angled brush to get the shape in. And then did any kind of fill-ins with the... Benefit Precisely My Brow in number six. For the eye makeup today, I'm trying to veer away from not always using By Terry Bronze Moon as much as I love it. So we're gonna keep trying to share more eye bases with you that are really good. So this is from Nude Sticks. It's the Magnetic Matte Eye Color in the shade Fig. These blend out so pretty. And with the right shade, if you get a shade that really kind of matches your skin tone, it looks like no makeup. It looks like natural kind of shadow on your eyes. Okay, then for the tight line, I have the Cargo Swimmables in Pebble Beach. I love these, they're so good. And then to play with a little color today, I have the same pencil in the shade Caron Beach. I think that's how you pronounce it, it's a purple. And I have this in the waterline. For eyeshadow, do you guys remember this? This is the Dull 10 palette. This is the Pro Eyeshadow palette. Um, I don't see the name on um, it. This one has more cool tones and purples. So on the lid today, I have this whole column. So I have this on the lid. I have this on the crease and on the lower lash line and I have this like smudged into the lashes. This is Fig from Nude Sticks. This is Cargo's Pebble Beach and Caron Beach, and these are the three eyeshadows from the Doll 10 palette. Look how beautiful. So this palette, I highly recommend to you if you are on the go, working woman, and that includes like stay-at-home moms, 
anyone that is crunched for time, you will love this. I would say you get medium pigmentation, so you can build it, but you can also have like a sheer eye. You can build it up if you wanted something more dramatic. You can use a colored base if you want them to pop more. But if you just don't want to think about your eyeshadow and you just need something to work every time, this is it. All the colors blend together beautifully. They're very coordinating. I play with this area more and then maybe this. These two shades are a little cool for me and kind of just, they kind of like look blah on me. This color, you have two kind of shimmery shades. This is so beautiful. I mean, angelic. And then the other shimmer you get is right here, but it's a very subtle shimmer. This is the Cheek to Chic Blush and Contour Palette. This is a really good palette. There's something about the powder formula from Doll 10. It's like this kind of, it's not liquidy and it's not wet, but it feels like maybe at one point it was wet and then it like, I don't know, with magic got pressed into these like really amazing powders. So I've been playing with this a lot. Okay, here are the swatches. This is the bronzer. This is the contour. I really enjoy both of those. Sorry, that's a swatch from previous. This is the color that's a contour shade that would work really well if you have fair skin. It just doesn't, sh it looks really weird on my skin, obviously. And these are the two blushes. This color I love a lot. It might be coming off more pigmented. I mean, it is pigmented, so it's coming off a little more darker on camera, but it's like a really pretty peachy color. And then this, I don't do pink or blush, so you guys know I probably don't reach for that. These two look really pretty on the eyes. This color. Let me find out what this shade name is. It's just called Glow, and it's a highlighter, but it's kind of matte, but when you buff it into your skin, I have been using it consecutively every day since I got this palette as my brow bone highlight. I was just, you know, swatching them when you, as you do when you first get products, and I'm like, oh my god, this is like really beautiful. And I buffed it in with my finger, and it was so pretty, and then I used a brush, so I've been using it as my brow highlight. And it's just so easy and beautiful. I use it as kind of like my all over face highlight when I just wanted to do a more matte look. It looks so pretty. I'm gonna have to show you guys later on in like a, you know, a different makeup sharing. Like I said, if you are like working woman on the go, you just need products that work together. These are so good. I am like really about these. I would say if you want a lot of pigment, use a colored base for the eyeshadows, but even if you don't just use like a regular primer, you'll get like really, really beautiful, easy, I mean, for the lack of a better word, you'll get really beautiful like office looks or very good like everyday looks. And then you have like that, those two spots of shimmer and then like that darker black if you really wanna take it from day to night. So I'm about this. And they have another palette that's more like fall with like more olive and like warmer browns. So I'm gonna look into that. Just the formula of their powders is really, really great. I really like them. Um, as I kind of go through more of the products, I'll share more of my thoughts on them. Next up in the eye category, we have the NYX Epic Ink Liner. This is amazing. I got this last night. I went to Ulta. Like I said, I'm going to do a drugstore diaries for you guys. I have Ulta. I went to Target. I have a Milani order coming in. Oh, Milani's doing 20% off this weekend. Labor Day, I'll link it below so you can also purchase because there's a lot of items that I keep wanting to try that are not at my CVS, they're not at my uh, Target, they're, I don't see them at any of the stores that carry Milani by me, so I just putting in that order and having 20% off was super awesome. Anyway, this is a liquid liner. It is a brush tip waterproof matte liner. My favorite. Look at this. Look at that black. It doesn't bleed, super beautiful. It's what I used to do the wing today, like, <sighs> drugstore. Before, I mean, I play with a lot of liners. I tend to favor ones that are made in Korea or made in Japan. I love the Tom Ford, but then I realized that one is also, I think, made in Japan. Um, this is drugstore. The price is amazing. The brush is amazing. Uh, imagine maybe like the Kat Von D liner with like a slightly thinner brush darker formula better formula i'm so about this and i had 20 percent off at ulta yesterday so this is probably going to be like the new the new liner lastly lips i have just been using my ColourPop lip liners non-stop because they just don't move this is in the shade bff i probably showed this to you a few times already 
um, recently. And then I used a matte shaker. This is Energy Peach. This is the, the lip product that kind of really got me into like more pinky lips. And then I have the Doll 10 She's a Keeper. I had like full on swatches and showed this to you guys in an earlier vlog, but I really love this gloss. They kind of smell like vanilla cake, which is awesome. I also have been using this one a lot, more so in the center of the lips, because I've been kind of favoring kind of like a, a kind of more matte lip, look wise, not feel wise, but then like adding just a tiny bit of gloss to the center. This is in the shade Girl Next Door, and it's very similar to She's a Keeper, just slightly more cool toned. I love it because you kind of can just play with them just a teeny tiny bit to, sh to kind of change your shade. So in their packaging, this is Girl Next Door and this is She's a Keeper. So they're, they're, there's like a very subtle difference, but for those who kind of like are very into your nudes, that subtle difference makes a difference when you apply it. So there's ColourPop BFF, that's Energy Peach, which I have blended out a lot on the lips. And then there's She's a Keeper and Girl Next Door from Doll 10. And that's the makeup today. Actually, you know what? I wanted to talk about something a little more. Okay, this NYX eyeliner, I had, when I came home yesterday, obviously, as you do, you play with your makeup immediately. So I swatched it on my hand, and I really liked it. And then I realized once it set, like, it was really difficult to remove. So today is my first day wearing it, and we're going to see how it goes for removal. Because to me, there's three kinds of liners, liquid liners. There's the one that you apply, and it kind of smudges during the day, and you're like, thanks. No thanks. And then the one that you apply and it doesn't move at all, but then when you go to remove it, it's difficult and or it leaves a stain, which sometimes I like. I prefer that on certain occasions. And then there's the best kind, which hopefully this is that kind, is where it stays on all day and stays black and doesn't smudge and looks perfect. And then when you go to remove it with a makeup remover, like an eye makeup remover, it goes away. All right, so, all right. So wearing a bandeau, which obviously, leads to just readjusting your breasts all day. Um, I couldn't put any like bra strap over this or whatnot. Like when I was filming and showing you guys the makeup, that was like the softest material that could possibly be made. It felt like I didn't feel it on my skin, but you go to work, you can't, <laughs> can't wear that. Actually, you know what? I could have worn that and then put this over it. Oh my God, I'm so dumb. All right, whatever. So obviously we're not gonna buy any ice cream this coming weekend. <laughs> um, the only reason we had so much ice cream is because um, I had that Target coupon. I was like, if anybody's never watched these vlogs before and then they're just like, dang, girl eats like a lot of ice cream, right? <laughs> no, I tend to have like one or two pints. Let's just, okay, two. And then now that I've started trying those like slices, so I like, to ha I like having like two kinds of ice cream to choose from at any given time if I'm into ice cream. Also, you guys heard about Amazon and Whole Foods, right? I'm so excited. Now I have like this impetus to go to Whole Foods because like stuff is supposedly generally cheaper, right? And then I don't know what the advantages of being an Amazon Prime member are though. So I might go this weekend. I don't know. This is Labor Day weekend. I'm so excited. Long weekend. So necessary. Also, happy September. Today's September 1st. I'm like trying to think of things to share with you guys. Um, oh, blog sale. A lot of you guys have either been like messaging me or in the comments or whatever, like, where's your blog sale? I closed it down for a little bit. Just like what do you call it like turn the store off um so i could clear out all the old stuff which you guys kind of saw and like when i was like donating to project beauty share so i got rid of i threw out a lot of stuff donated a lot of stuff and then put new products up um so the link will be oh as it always is below i probably should have removed it when it was closed but like it's part of my like default upload information so i forget that it's there sometimes do you guys know what salad I've been obsessed with? Panera has this like watermelon feta salad. I've had it like three or four times already. It is so good. There's like little like bits of quinoa in it and it's like basically all arugula. So if you're like me and you love arugula, it's just the best salad ever. But I think it's seasonal. Like it, like most watermelon salads are typically like, you know, summer things. So um, for those of you guys that responded to the Instagram post, thank you. It was very cute. 
because last vlog, last week's vlog, the title was like girthy bananas, get ready with me, whatever, whatever. So the rare times, the rare occasions that I do do like do an Instagram post, I asked in the caption, it was like something, the vlog. Oh, for those of you guys who've already watched the vlog, how do we like our bananas? And some of you guys, <laughs> bless your heart, actually told me how you like your bananas because I think maybe you hadn't seen the vlog yet. But for those who had already watched the vlog, your responses were so funny. You guys are the best. I know I have, I really should say this in every single video, but every weekend when your comments come in, I like, you guys are really the best. Like, the best. And there's like, a, like a large group of you that tend to like will message me after the vlog goes up like on Instagram and I love it because there, it's like so much more personal and fun right so like you guys will tell me your thoughts on the vlog or you'll tell me like what you really liked about the vlog or sometimes it's like something that's like maybe it's not super appropriate for the comment section so you guys will like DM me I love it thank you so much for doing that okay so this is like the weirdest thing as you get older you will notice that you stop experiencing things for the first time and then you just stop noticing it completely. Do you know what I mean? Or for those of you guys who are older, you'll probably get this. But I had gone to the chiropractor, right? I was telling you guys. I don't think I've ever been to a doctor that was younger than me. I, I, I'm not 5,000% positive that he's younger than me because I don't know how old he is, but I'm almost, almost 100 99% sure that he was younger than me and it was just the weirdest feeling I feel like maybe I've just always been going to doctors that were like in their 50s and 60s so this was just so so odd for me I was just like it wasn't like I was disregarding or dismissing anything he would say to me but it was just so interesting maybe I'm being really weird about this but I don't think I am because as you get older you really do tend to experience things for the first time less but it was just so odd. Also, I'm like the oldest of four, so I'm like used to like younger people <laughs> talking to me or asking me for advice or, you know, I don't know. I feel so stupid now. I mean, Andrew's 29. He's younger than me. He's a doctor. 